Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today we're going to be taking a look at an expansion to Everdell and joining in a great festival. This is Everdell Bell Fair. This expansion to the game is very much unlike the other two expansions available. The first one, Pearl Brook, that came out some time ago, and the other one that is also new coming out around the same time as this called Spire Crest. And the main reason for that is because this one is a modular expansion. It's sort of a catch-all for a few different ideas that didn't fit, I'm guessing, in the other expansions, and they end up in this box. And so you can mix and match what you want to play with. Uh, there is still a good amount of stuff in here, a decent amount that you can choose to throw in there. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at it, but it is a little less cohesive than the other two expansions. So anyway, let's go ahead and cut to the table, take a look at everything in here, and I'll see you on the other side. So here's pretty much everything you are going to get with the expansion, and it is all modular. A lot of these parts you're going to be able to use without using others. You can mix and match, you can throw it all in if you want to. I'm going to talk you through all of the bits here and kind of give you a quick uh, impressions of what I think of that thing. I'll tell you a little bit more about it in the end overview and you know my final thoughts, but we'll take a look at what comes in here and I'll tell you how often I'm, I'm likely to use it and how much I like it, all right? So we've got the rule book here giving us a breakdown of the components. The only thing I'm not gonna be showing you here is the new meeples, the new critters. You're going to get six cardinals and six toads. You also get the frog ambassadors for uh, the other expansion, the first expansion. So just more meeples, very nice, new choices, new colors. I like that plenty. So the other things, let's, I'm gonna go ahead and go down these things and tell you quickly how they work and what I think of it. So the main thing I wanna get out of the way here is the player boards. This is by far the most useless part of this whole package. Everybody can take one of these player boards uh, the artwork doesn't matter, you just take whichever one you want, and you're meant to use this to keep your resources and uh, extra workers, I guess, and start building the cards down here in this space, and they'll develop that way. This is, like I said, completely pointless and worthless. I just never use it. It's a bunch of uh, wasted cardboard, in my opinion. Uh, this game already takes a ton of table space, and this only adds to that problem. So that you can leave in the box, in my opinion. Uh, then we've got over here this board, the Belfair board. You can use on top of the main board, the main board being down here, to replace the tree largely. It also gives you a couple of the uh, modules in here printed on this board. But you can choose to put your extra workers for, you know, spring, summer, and autumn up here. Not put the tree in play and just display the uh, special events right here below this there's going to be some space between this and the uh, and the main board uh and that's it you know that's basically it um i like it i like using this board especially if i intend to use the the special abilities printed on it instead of the tree i don't use the tree very often anyway so this is pretty nice then we've got over here a special event a the flower festival is a new special event just like the ones on the main board and you have to have one card of each type to claim this. This is nice, simple. I'll throw that into the game, no problem. Uh, it folds right in. We've got over here a new area called the Market. And it's an open area. Everybody can send a worker there, but you can only send one per player. So you cannot go there twice in the same stage, the same season. When you go there, you do one of two things. Let me move these garlands out of the way. I'll come back to them. So when you go here, you send a worker there, and you can either gain or you can trade. If you gain, you pick one of these tiles at the top, one of these crates, and you get whatever's in it. So for example, I might take two berries, draw two cards, and then I take this token and I move it down to the trade section. And that's all I do. Let's say second player comes over here, they get one pebble, three cards, they move this down. And then the third player comes and they want to do one of the trade powers. The trade power you are going to select one of the crates at the bottom. You are going to pay the stuff it lists. So say uh, the third player gives up two berries, discards two cards, and they are going to take this over here. Three victory points, any two resources they want. And then this moves back to the top. So this is really nice. It's a great way to get a boost of resources you uh, might need, a boost of cards, 
And uh, the bottom then is great late game because you can turn things you're not using into victory points or possibly resources you really need. It doesn't get used a lot because of the limitation. So there's not going to be a lot of activity up here, but I do like the extra choice. This is a, a nice clean concept that works well in the game. And uh, I'm always happy to throw in this, especially since I'm likely to be using this board and this is pre-printed right on it, I'll be using that. By the way, if you don't wanna use this board, you do have a tile that has the market on it. You can just set this aside somewhere and use that if you wanna still use your tree and don't wanna use the Belfair board there. Then besides that, we've got, like I said, the Garland um, Award tiles. We're gonna shuffle these up and reveal one and it's gonna be some sort of special bonus at the end of the game. In this case, most production cards. At the end of the game, if you have the most, you get six points, second place gets three. That's it. Uh, and they have a set for each kind of card. So say uh, most prosperity cards there, and they also have one for most constructions and one for most critters. One of these only is going to be in play though. And I think it's fine. It, stays out of the way generally. I don't really think about it until much later in the game where I look at what I have, I consider what everyone else is doing and think, you know, I'm within striking distance of the leader in this category. I'll try to get one or two more cards in that. See if I can snag those extra six victory points. So I like it, it's fine, but it's also unobtrusive and doesn't really shake things up, which is okay when I'm mixing in several of these small expansions. So that's the Garland Award tiles. Then over here we've got a few cards. So you've got four forest cards, which are very nice, a little variety, I enjoy them. I especially like this one here, where you play, uh, when you play a worker there, you trigger two of your uh, green cards again. You play them and they trigger, and then if you go here, you trigger two of them again. That's really neat, I like that power a lot. And then we've got some of these uh, uh, special event cards. And these I really like. This is one of my favorite parts in the expansion because these are not as specific as the ones in the original game. In the original game, there was a lot of, you know, these cards that said, oh, you need the Undertaker, you need the Teacher, and you need this one building. And if you have all those things, then you can work here. You can, you can send a worker and get some points. These are a lot more open-ended. So, for example, in this one, you need to have four of the uh, Prosperity cards. And if you send a worker there, you discard three cards from your hand, six victory points. There are some that are just simple like this, five common constructions. You have five common constructions, send a worker there, get five victory points. Really clean, really simple. These are fantastic. Now the way they say you use these is you shuffle them up, you reveal two of them, and then you reveal two from the original game, which is fine. Though I do prefer these, and I wish I could replace the entire deck from the original game, I, I, I'm I happy to have two that are a little easier to achieve. And then the other two can still reward players that want to focus on that and do that forward planning to get the right cards in their display. So, excellent. One of my favorite parts, like I said. And then lastly, my absolute favorite part, which is the player powers. These are going to have all of the different critters that you can find in the game and its several expansions. And to start, you're going to shuffle these up. Everybody gets a couple of them. And then you pick which characters you want to be. So I might be uh, the mice or the lizards. And you pick the one you want. So say I'll be the mice. You grab your uh, mice meeples. And you're going to have a special power for the entire game. The mice, for example, are efficient gatherers. After you visit a basic or a forest location, you gain any one resource that you do not already have. Really neat stuff. Having a unique power from the get-go uh, that's only going to ever be yours and you can try to you know, have it apply exactly when you want it to be tricky with your placement in order to benefit from this is excellent. And they are quite diverse. There's a lot of really interesting ones. They give you some tokens here that work with a couple of the different powers in the deck. And I'm not really going to show you all of these, but just uh, know that they give you quite a few and that they are excellently thought out and interesting. They're always engaging to play with. So these are really, really neat. My favorite part, like I said. So there you go. I think that's everything. I think I've covered it all. 
Uh, let's go ahead and go back up top. Let me give you some final thoughts on this. All right, that is Belfair. Let me go ahead and dig into this one. I will say right off the bat that I like out of the three expansions to Everdell, and I really like Everdell, by the way, out of the three expansions, this is the one I like the least. It's the one that, like I said, feels the least cohesive. It feels the most uh, expensive for the, the amount of goodies you get in it. It seems to change the game the least. So you combine all those things and you can see as to why it's my least favorite. It's not to say it's not worthwhile, but I have some reservations with it. So let me go ahead and knock these down. I already talked uh, about some of my thoughts of the respective parts. So this is just to finalize all that. So thematic ties, we'll start there. It's about a festival in Everdell. And it's cute. It's a nice idea. It's it's celebratory. It's attractive. It's well-made. I like the theme. The aesthetics here are still beautiful and well-made, though it is, like I said, expensive. The MSRP on this is $40, and that seems like a lot for what you're getting in the box. It is a very skinny box, as you can see here. Everything fits in there very easily. It's a decent amount of empty space, actually, because there's not a lot of bits. There's not a lot of content, ultimately, and that's okay. You don't need the, be the, the, the to be about bits to make it worthwhile, but it still feels like $40 is expensive. Again, that's MSRP. You can find it for less. The replayability here gets a little bit of a ding for me, and that's because while there are a lot of little bits... A lot of them don't feel like they increase replayability. The player powers do, the character powers, I feel, do. And you can come back again and again and play with different ones. They'll, they'll inform the way you play to a degree. A lot of the other ones don't really do that. You know, they don't necessarily feel like, wow, this new option that I have available to me is going to shake this game up. They don't come across that way. They don't uh, play out that way. So that's why it gets a ding there. The game length, still the same, no problem there. It's about the same. I, I always thought Everdell had a pretty good curve to uh, the game length, so no issues. Uh, the ease of play is good. Every part of it is simple, and, and in fact, even if you throw everything in the game, which I have, and play that way, it's still simple, and I like that. I wouldn't combine this expansion with any of the other ones, and in fact, I don't think I would combine any of them. But I could see you throwing maybe one little piece of this one into the game with another one of the big expansions. One little thing in this, you know. So, but if you want everything, you can just play with everything that's in here. Again, not very cohesive, but you can do that. Uh, lastly, tactics and strategy and luck. Again, it gets a little ding for me here because I don't feel that the tactics, the, the interesting choices and uh you know conundrums you'll find yourself in are not raised by this expansion very much i think the character powers are good i think the new goal cards that you're trying to get specific combinations of cards those are neat i like the variety there but no one part of it revolutionizes what you're doing so that's that's why i feel that way about it overall i like it though and uh let me give you my final thoughts here and see, you know, who I think this would be good for. So, bottom line is as follows. Targeted more at collectors than those looking for robust new content, it is still recommended if you want more and have both of the other expansions already. So, there you go. That's who I think this is for. You have the original game, you have Pearl Brook, you have Spirecrest, you still want more content, you like messing around with little variations, then yes, I would recommend this. But I would certainly get it last, and I think it adds the least and feels kind of expensive for what you get. So there you go. 7 out of 10, though, is going to get a seal of approval from me. This is, uh, like I said, it's still a worthwhile expansion. I would just be aware that you sort of want to put this out of your mind until you've played the game, played the other two expansions, which are all better. So that's it, everybody. That is Belfair. I am Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. 
Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.